I went to Haiti uh, during the cholera epidemic. Patients with cholera die from dehydration. They come into the hospital and the clinics without any veins, and they often are too late to save them. And as soon as I got to the hospital, they screamed for me to come in. There was a little baby girl they thought was dying and almost dead. The mother had placed her in a funeral dress because she thought she was dead. They'd been sticking her with a needle for over 30 minutes, could not start an IV. Uh, you don't save everyone. Um, and, and it's true, it's difficult. My uh, medical education, I, I really thought everything outside of the clinical arena was a waste of my time. But then I realized, in order to really be a good physician, I had to be a pretty good scientist. So I got interested in science. And, and you know, work in my laboratory, to me, was another way of working on a patient. As an emergency physician for more than 35 years, uh, every day I face the problem of vascular access. The problem with these big veins that may be as big as your finger, fairly big veins, when you go into shock, the veins collapse. And so it's like finding a way in between two pieces of paper way under the skin. It's just impossible to do that. In a lot of cases, people don't know what good is until they see good, right? They kind of think the status quo, well, that's how it always has been, and that's how it's always going to be. One day, one of my paramedics, his name was Nick Davila, that was involved in a car accident. And he amputated one of his arms. He was losing a lot of blood. The paramedics got there right away. They put on a tourniquet. He was still alive and breathing and talking, but he was in severe shock. And so they started sticking him to start an IV. They stuck him 20 times, and they could not get an IV started. Before he made it to the hospital, he had died. He had died for lack of venous access. And at that moment, I said, this is unacceptable. He was a friend of mine. He was one of my paramedics. The bone marrow is like a huge vein. It never collapses in shock. You can give blood or fluids right through the bone marrow. This has been known for many years. There has to be a way. This can't be rocket science. We must be able to develop a way to get a needle safely into a, an, an adult bone. There were times when, when I thought it would fail. I gave it everything, my life, my, my savings, my mortgage. I knew this could be used once in a while, but I had no idea of the magnitude of the, of the technology and how it's been accepted throughout the world. We've sold over four million of these to date, been used on patients in 60 countries of the world. Over my years working with the EZIO, I've had the opportunity to travel to universities all around the world. And I'm absolutely amazed at the University of Michigan. It stands high and above most others. So this is really uh, sort of a rare breeding ground for innovation. Well, in my lifetime, I've seen some amazing advances. People like to say, I got a higher goal, and we got a better goal, and the next month's a better goal. People like to get behind that. It really is amazing. There really is no other place like that. I remember 30 years ago, you know, that we were only had a limited number of medicine that we can use. Uh, but now, the options are, are limitless. And without philanthropy, none of these advances would have happened.
When you walk into a room with a patient, all your senses are activated. You look at the patient. You put your hands on the patient. And as soon as I got to the hospital, they screamed for me to come in. And you can try to understand how to help that patient. We put in the uh, EZIO. I started the fluids immediately. Within, within about 10 seconds, we had IVs running on her. Within two hours, the, the little girl was crying. And within two days, she went home well. Wow. That has to compare to winning a Wall Street Journal award. Oh, absolutely. That beat the Wall Street Journal a thousand times over, that little girl's life. To me, that was my greatest satisfaction. Thank you.